goalkeepers making mistakes against Arsenal? I don't think so. No way. I think these are just really inspirational and unselfish people trying to help out the environment. These are people who care and support the 3000 Trees campaign by Hector Bellerin and they're just doing the right thing. Shout out to Alex McCarthy, to Tim Krul and to the defender who gave Obama and the third goal, Dramic or Dramic, something like that. I really wish them all the best in their careers. I hope all of them end up at Bayern Munich and Barcelona next season. They're doing the right thing for the environment and I hope every other team you're going to play against are going to let us win the games. Let's plant 18,000 more trees in the Premier League and another 6,000 in the FA Cup. Let's support this course. Come on, you gunners. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the channel for everything Arsenal and everything football. Thanks for being here. I hope you're all doing well. And yeah, you can tell I'm really happy. I'm still really happy. So let's just get into it. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the three things we learned from Arsenal's 4-0 victory over Norwich City. The three things we learned from Arsenal's 4-0 victory over Norwich City. So that was back to back to back wins we've made it three wins in a row and um we've played well in the last three games to be honest some really tough games against southampton and sheffield united you could say that the norwich one is a bit easier they've lost the, all their games since the since the premier league returned and they've lost another one in the FA Cup against man U. so yeah they are not the best of opponents but we did our job we had a convincing win for the first time since newcastle and before that i don't even remember the last time we had a good convincing win and we actually went from we came off the game happy i don't remember the last time so in this video as i've said i'm going to be talking about the three things we learned from the game uh more positives than negatives i think 90 percent were positives the only negative as i said uh in my player ratings i've already put out a player ratings i'll link it up in the youtube card right now if you want to check that out i say that lacazette and ballerina are probably the only negatives from that game but there are a lot of positives and i'm going to be telling you the three things i learned or we learned from that game and let's just get straight into it Number one is Aubameyang getting more opportunities playing centrally. Now, we know he has scored very many goals before playing on the left wing, but clearly today, yes, it, he was still playing on the left wing, but he didn't have to defend as much, so he was playing much as a central striker, and that is how he got his the first goal and the second goal. He was just really hanging around and sniffing around the box, and the errors by Dremich and Krull, he was there. He was there as a central striker at that time and he pounced on those mistakes. He was, If he was out on the left, he wouldn't have gotten those opportunities and it would have fallen to someone else like the way it fell to Mkete against Southampton or Lacazette. And maybe you never know, maybe he wouldn't have scored, but Aubameyang playing as a central striker, he gets more opportunities, he sniffs around, he chases down the goalkeepers, and he gets opportunities. Both goals coming from him just hanging around the goalkeeper and not having to defend a lot. Obviously, today he didn't have to defend a lot, or yesterday he didn't have to defend a lot against Norwich. Uh, of course, you'll, if he plays on the left against teams like Wolves, Liverpool, Tottenham, he won't get those opportunities because imagine him against Traore, on the right wing against Wolves. He will have to defend for 80 minutes of that game because Traore is just, he keeps running. He doesn't stop. So you'd have, you'd want Aubameyang to help out Tien or Kolasina, whoever is playing at that time on the left. And you don't want that. We want Aubameyang to be fighting against Connor Cody and Willy Bolly and Rui Patricio centrally and have someone else on the left. Preferably Tien and Saka on the left, people who know how to defend. And let's have Aubameyang up front. Because, uh, as I've said, Traoré at Wolves, Salah at Liverpool, Lamela at Tottenham, or even Son maybe on that wing, he will have to defend a lot. So give him the chance as a central striker and he'll get those goals. He'll make those goalkeepers make errors instead of having him on the left and having him defend against the likes of Traoré and Salah. So that that is the first thing we noticed from that game. When he plays central, he gets so many opportunities, uh, very many shots on target. Uh, in the first half, he almost scored two. So let's have Aubameyang as a central striker once or twice. Let's play a two forward. Let's have him up front. So that is the first thing we learned from that game. 
The second thing is that it actually looks like Mikel Ateta watched some of my videos. I actually talked, I really wish, by the way. I I can actually end up as a national assistant manager. I know the job is tough, but anyway, I did a video about how Arsenal, why Arsenal should line up with three defenders and four midfields at 3 4 1 2. Basically, I'll link it up in the YouTube card right now. You can check it out. And I talked about how that formation is suitable for Arsenal. And it actually does look like Ateta prefers that in the last couple of games or has preferred that in the last couple of games. Against Southampton in the second half, I don't know who went off. I think mm, Tieni went off. And then we played with, uh, with four midfielders, I think, and two strikers and Saka would come back and make it a back five. And then against Sheffield, we played with a back three. And today, too, we started with a back three. And that formation really suits us. I talked about allowing us to play two strikers. We want two strikers on the pitch, allowing us to have people like Luis with an extra two defenders in case he makes mistakes. And if he can, when he comes forward with the ball, he still has two defenders covering for him. All our fullbacks like attacking Tierney, Colasin, Saka when he plays in that position, Bellerin, Niles, and even Cedric now, who's a goal scorer, as we've seen, these players like going forward, so don't play with the back four. When they go forward, you're all of a sudden exposed, and this formation has worked for us in the last two games. Another thing we've seen from that formation is that when we have the ball when you're attacking, it is a back three with... Um, Today it was Kolasinac, Luis and Mustafi and Tierney and uh, Bellerin would bomb forward. But when we lose the ball, Tierney comes back, Bellerin comes back and we make it a back five and Kolasinac is the third, um, is the third, uh, what, third defender, th third centre back, sorry. And he can also move to left back, Tierney pushes forward to left wing. So that formation works for us perfectly for now. I don't know about which players we're going to get next season, but for now, for the next six games, seven games, eight games, hopefully we get to the FA Cup final. Let's have this formation. Shaq and Sabayas also look comfortable in the middle, so let's go with this formation. Number three is we have fullbacks who can cross the ball. Kieran Tin has played really well in the last two, three games. His crossing is very good. When he gets forward, he actually completes a cross. Cedric, when he came on, looked very good. His crossing doesn't waste time. Accurate crosses. I know some are uh, uh, cleared out by the defenders, but he doesn't mess around. Crosses, quality, scored a goal. Tierney, very good, accurate crosses. I know Kolasinac does put in some crosses, but not accurate always. Bellerin has been struggling, struggling, struggling. That word is always so hard. Recently, he has been struggling really much recently. Cedric looks good. Tierney, before the sh shoulder injury, he has assisted um, two or three Martinelli goals. And that was from accurate crosses. So we're actually getting what we bought uh, at, uh, in Tierney. And we're actually seeing why he actually gave Cedric a, uh, a contract, a long-term contract. Or yeah, we signed him permanently, basically. It's really, really good knowing you have fullbacks who know how to cross and know how to defend. We've lacked that so many years, so I wish Cedric and Tini all the best. No injuries again. Let's see how they can do against the top teams, and I hope they do well. So those are the three things we learned. Obama and getting opportunities as central striker, the 3-4-2-1 or 3-4-1-2 formation working for us better, and we actually have fullbacks who can cross the ball. Another bonus um, positive from today is that we are actually taking gifts. Yes, at the start of the video, I know it was so dramatic, but we are actually accepting these gifts. We are being given these gifts and we are accepting them. Two goals today from uh, defensive errors. Against Southampton, Katia took advantage. A penalty against Sheffield United. So we are being given opportunities and we are taking them, which is really, really good. And uh, yeah, we are really happy. Three wins in a row. Wolves next, Leicester after that, Tottenham after that, Liverpool after that, tough fixtures coming up. I hope we take this momentum to that uh, to those games. Most of our players are playing well right now. We've rested Saka and Pepe. Things are looking good. Aubameyang got a brace, 50 goals, fastest player to 50 goals for Arsenal. So we're really thrilled with that. So yeah, just a quick video on what and the three things. 
And um, the three things we learned from the game, I'll have my preview for Wolves later on, maybe on Thursday night or Friday morning, depending how the schedule is. Yeah. So thanks for watching again. Keep staying safe. Come on, you gunners, and I'll talk to you later.